Hello everyone, welcome to Daikatana. This is a game with a hell of a lot of history behind it. It had a, uh, let's just say, a rocky development cycle, to say the least. I'm actually playing this because of a book, of all things. You see, I was reading a book called Masters of Doom, which is a biography about the lives of John Carmack and John Romero, John Romero being the person who made this game, Daikatana. And it's a damn good book, if you have any interest in reading, if you have any interest in the history of games, I would highly recommend it. I'll have a link in the description where you can check it out. And one of the things I went over was the creation of Daikatana, and it was really interesting to read about how it went, how it uh, how it came to be, and it made me really want to play it. So here's the quick version of how Daikatana actually was made. Okay, in the old days, John Carmack and John Romero worked together. But they started to have issues, and John Romero ended up forming his own company, splitting off and forming his own company called Ion Storm. And John Romero wanted to make something huge. He wanted to make a big, epic shooter. And his idea for that was Daikatana. The thing is, though, his original estimate for how long it would take to make was, uh, let's just say, not very realistic. I think it was actually expected to come out sometime in 1997 or 1998. However, that didn't work out. It took a hell of a lot longer. They were dealing with, you know, they're, they just formed a new studio, so they're dealing with hiring people and getting people into the groove of things, and then just... John Romero just simply bit off more than he could chew. So it got delayed. And then it got delayed. And then it got delayed again, and again, and again, and again, and pretty much delayed into infinity. It was originally going to be released... Yeah, sometime in 2000, uh, 1997 or 1998, I can't remember which year. But it ended up actually coming out in 2000. So it was actually delayed by years. It went massively over budget, took way more money and way more time than they thought it would take. And... John Romero was, of course, hoping that all of that effort and money would be worth it, and they'd have a huge hit on their hands, and his dream of making an epic shooter would be realized. However, that wasn't exactly the case. So all this money was poured into it. It came years late. It finally came out. And no one really cared. It didn't sell well, it was a total flop. And it wasn't very well received. And that's... <laughs> that's pretty much it. It was really interesting to read about that development. It's just so... so bizarre. To have a game delayed by years. And then finally come out and then be just... a, a mess, apparently. And that's what made me want to play it. You know, I've... I, so I read about it in a book, but I want to actually play it. Because I've never seen gameplay footage of this game whatsoever. I've never seen a trailer, I've never seen gameplay footage. I've never even started it up myself. I've, I've just gone in the menu. I'm trying to remain as unsullied as possible. I really want to go in as fresh as possible. And see what this game is actually about. The only thing I've seen are just screenshots. That's it. So, here's this epic mess of a game, and... Let's jump into it and see what the hell it's all about. Alright, single player. Difficulty. Well, I guess I'll go with the medium one. That's probably normal difficulty. And let's see what the hell's gonna happen. I love that they just had to zoom in on his crotch. Pardon the interruption, Miyamoto-san. There is a visitor waiting outside, refuses to identify himself, will only speak to the proprietor of the school. Also, Tanaka-san left a message earlier complaining about the injuries to his son. He... I should have stayed in bed. 
Let me guess, Miho. It's my landlord at the door, right? Like I said, the visitor would not give his name. Did Mishima-san send you? Tell him I'll have his money by... I, uh... I can assure you that I am not here on Mishima's behalf. My name is Toshiro Ebihara. You want to learn to sword fight? Great. You're a bit older than my usual clientele, but it's never too late to. <laughs> no. <coughs> no. No, please. You misunderstand. Look, if you're asking for some donation... Uh, perhaps if you would allow me to explain, Miyamoto-san, you need only spare me a few moments. Go on. Uh, not here. They may be watching. They? They who? Come. Let's take a stroll. I promise you it will be worth your time. Centuries ago, the shogunate Mishima ruled over our people with an iron fist and a bloody sword. The only opposition came from the Ebihara clan, a group of warriors dedicated to overthrowing the brutal regime. For years, the Mishimas tried to rid themselves of the Ebihara without success. After years of frustration, the ruthless leader of the Mishimas came up with a plan. Disguising his true intent, Osaka Mishima hired a legendary swordmaster to create the ultimate weapon, the Dai Katana. This legendary master was Usagi Miyamoto, your ancestor. Renowned for his warrior skills, his love of swordplay led him to become an expert swordsmith as well. It was not until the blade was completed that Usagi realized Osaka's malevolent nature. Through the power of the sword, he was able to foresee the fate that awaited mankind should Mishima ever take control of the Daikatana. Usagi refused to hand the powerful weapon over to the Mishimas. Instead, he offered it to the Shogunate's nemesis, Inshiro Ebihara, but only on the condition that it be returned to him after the evil Mishimas had been vanquished. In an epic battle atop Mount Fujiya, Inshiro used the awesome might of the Daikatana to decimate Mishima's legions. Thousands died on that battlefield, but Mishima was finally overthrown. Convinced that the mystic sword was too powerful to be wielded by mere mortals, Usagi threw the Daikatana into the heart of the raging volcano. So you want me to create another Daikatana? No, that's not necessary. I am one of Inshiro's direct descendants. Hard as it may be for you to believe, I was once a very wealthy man with the vast resources at my disposal. I funded an expedition to uncover the long-lost Daikatana in the bowels of the dormant volcano. Let's assume for a second that I believe any of this. What's the big deal? The Daikatana is still just a sword like any other, right? Wrong. Legend has it that the Daikatana contains many secrets. Even the ability to warp time and space. You see, the fabric of time is a delicate thing. And Usagi bestowed the sword with certain time-wandering capabilities, which have been used to alter our own perceptions of reality. Right. The man you know as Kagi Mishima, a descendant of the evil Osaka, found out about the discovery of the Daikatana before I even had a chance to examine the ancient artifact. He stole the sword and then used its magical powers to go back in time and change history. This world, our surroundings, are not what they appear to be. Things are not as they should be, as they were destined to be. 
As you may know, the mutagenic Marburg pox filovirus, more commonly known as MMP, first cropped up at the tail end of the millennium. Kagi claims that the Mishima family came up with a cure for the MMP virus back in the year 2030. Those claims are false. The truth is that the original creator of a vaccine was Dr. Tatsuo Ibihara, another of my ancestors. With the Daikatana in his possession, Kagi was able to travel back through time and steal the cure from Tatsuo, making it his own. I take it that that's how Kage accumulated the funds to finance his vast empire. That's right. Of course, Mishima only gives out the cure to those he desires to have it. I, I'm sorry, but I don't see what you need from me. It's about my daughter. Your daughter? From the moment of her birth, I trained my daughter Mikiko how to wield the Daikatana in case it were ever discovered. Several weeks ago, she followed Kagi in an attempt to retrieve the stolen sword. I have not heard from her since. I'm, I fear she is being held captive by Mishima at his fortress. So you want me to rescue her? Is that it? Yes. And then together, you must find the Daikatana, so that history can be changed back to the way it was. Neat story, Toshiro. But I'm not quite sure I buy it. Even if I did, I'm just a guy teaching kids how to fight with a sword. No! You are the descendant of Usagi Miyamoto! Embrace your heritage and... Who the... There is nothing you can do for me here, but find my daughter and the Daikatana. I, I can't just... Shh, say nothing. When the Death Collectors come to get my body, steal away inside the coffin. It will get you inside Mishima's fortress. The rest is up to you. But you are the bloodline hero. I know you will do the right thing. Thank you. Ah, bump ahead. Odds are evener. Evener. <laughs> what? There's so many things I wanted to say during that intro. Oh my god. How many we lose? Only four this time. Looks like my rock holding out. Too bad for you. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Oop. Yay! What the hell is that thing? Obviously I should avoid it. How much is- oh god! How the- what the- how- Why does the control keep attack? Shouldn't that be crouch? Is there a crouch? Maybe there is no crouch. Oh my god, that movement. Huh? 
Jesus Christ, it's so fast. That's how shooters were, though, back then, wasn't it? Wasn't that how they were? Just super, super, super fast movement. Also, games back then were strangely dark. Literally speaking, dark. Like, I need to turn up the brightness dark. Uh, I 10%? I don't know. Is I, what is it even doing? I'm just staring at a loading screen. Okay. I'm not sure when I lost video, but I just restored it there. Uh, I guess that's better. I, th I, I don't even know what's happening. At the moment, the only thing I have the ability to do is punch. Oh, sweet, I got an ion blaster. Because apparently that's a thing. Like, okay, I've got an ion blaster now. Cool. Alrighty then. I actually just tried to press R to reload. But I just realized this is a classic shooter. You don't reload. There is no such thing as a magazine. I think I need to go down the river of sludge. Okay. So my first enemies are like gigantic flies and frogs. Starting small, I guess. <laughs> Warning, this text is too blurry to read. Oh, hi. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what am I hearing? Just, just what kind of a frog is that? It sounded like it had pneumatic feet. Alright, I want to know how to get up there. Oh, there's a ladder. Is this a door? Is there a use key? Oh, there is. <laughs> You're energized by the golden soul. What the? Okay, so when I press the use key, and there's nothing to actually use, it sounds like I'm constipated. Really, that hurt my feet. Are those like... They look kind of like strawberries. What is wrong with those frogs? They don't sound right. That is not how frogs sound. It just isn't. Listen to that. I can't believe the first enemies they're throwing at me are gigantic flies and frogs. Like, tiny, annoying enemies that are hard to hit.
Also, apparently these loading screens can be sped up by disabling V-Sync. Don't ask me why it's weird. I forgot to do that. So they're kind of slow. I swear those things are actually machines. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, does it save? I just realized I don't even know if there's a save. Like, does it auto save? Now, I'm thinking the enemies might actually be like androids, robots or something. They seem like it. Okay, there was a save, cool. There's another one. Alright, what exactly activated that thing? Do I need to run over to the switch? Can I manually save? Whoa, I can? Okay. That's not a button I can use. Do I just shoot it before it pops up? Fully? You know, one of the things I heard, one of, like one of the big mistakes I heard about this game, one of the annoyances, is the fact that it throws these annoying enemies at you at the very beginning, which put a lot of people off. And I can certainly see why, like everybody's first experience of this game is shooting frogs, gigantic flies, all these things are hard to hit, and then dealing with like a stupid turret. That put me off. Oh, does it only pop up when I walk here? Uh. Do I just shoot that? What in the hell is, am I supposed to do here? Am I just supposed to run away before it shoots me? Oh, I keep shooting that. It doesn't take one hit, it takes more than one. Okay. They are actually machines, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That explains the noises. That didn't sound good. <laughs> God, the movement is... It's terrible. It's... Oh my god, did they actually... Wow. The movement. It, it's actually faster to move diagonally than it is to move forwards or, or in any one direction. Here's me moving forwards. And here's me, here's me moving forwards and to the right. Forwards, forwards and to the left. Forwards, forwards and to the right. It's actually faster to press two movement keys at once. Which means when you move around, it feels incredibly inconsistent. And it just feels like I'm sliding on the ground. And when you start to walk forwards, down a slope like this, and then you stop moving, like, I'm just gonna tap forwards. You continue to slide down and, like, bump down. It's... it's it feels horrible. Another one.
Oh, I guess I'm max. Oh god. Oh god. There you are. Yeah, these are some seriously obnoxious enemies. They weren't joking when they said that the beginning of this game sucks. <laughs> save gem acquired. Oh, is that how it works? You have save gems. Okay. Was, was that a thing? I don't know. It's been a long time since I've played old shooters. Some interesting security here. Do I have any way of blowing this up? Doesn't appear so. I guess I'll just step through it. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. That didn't sound good. Oh no, release the flies! Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? What the fuck? <laughs> Hiro Miyamoto failed at life is what it just said. Followed by an ing incredibly rough looking camera that's just kind of moving all over the place. Cool! The, oh. Okay. I'll go a little bit further, and this time I'll use my save gem. Like, I can barely... I can barely even see the enemies. Also, how the hell do you get that up there? How in the hell? Shooting it doesn't do anything. Eh, whatever. It almost seems like their mission was to annoy the player as much as possible. Also destroying that seems to cause an earthquake. Where, 
where is that coming from? There you are. Let's use my save gem this time. Can I kill them as they come out? Oh shit. Oh, well, I'm screwed. I have 15 health. There is a med pack here. Okay, hold on. Let me go down here first and clean it up. Come on, I see you, alligator. I didn't kill the alligator. Oh, there you are. I think I just nearly killed myself. Did I drown myself? I think I drowned myself. It's not exactly clear how much breath you have. And by not exactly clear, I mean it doesn't appear to tell you at all. I'm looking for a breath meter. I don't see one. Is there a breath meter? I don't see a breath meter. So long it takes me to drown. I saw some bubbles. Ah, so just a little bit of sound. Gotcha. Oh, also, you can't shoot underwater. That's the problem. You can't shoot underwater. Alright, well, I'm 90% dead. Let's try one more time. So basically, they throw a bunch of gnats at my face. And blow up the bridge so that I don't have room to move around. So I can't dodge the gnats that are swarming around my face. It's wonderful. It's so much fun. Do I even want to bother with what's down there? I don't know. <clears throat> I could, you know, I'm gonna, maybe I should go straight for the thing in the air, maybe. Of course. It's not just that it's a force field that prevents you from going in, it's an insta-explode field. Because why not? Okay, I said one more time, but actually, I want one that's actually a decent try, not just exploding in a, a force field. Where's 
the big motherfucker. Okay, time to go. I've got two med packs up here. I stand a chance. I do stand a chance in hell. Did I do it? Did I do it? I think I actually just did it. Okay. Uh, now what? Was there any point to doing that? Because that didn't open up, the bridge is still destroyed, and I still can't get back up there. Oh, wait a minute. You can eat these. You've got to use the plant. Okay. Eating some strawberry things. Oh god, oh god, oh yeah, of course. Oh shit, I'm out of ammo. Oh shit, oh shit. Oh god. Oh god damn it. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Can't shoot. And shoot in the water. Also, I just fell in the water because ladders are fucking terrible in this game. Or is it? There it is. Oh, I think I just killed it. You're protected by the Mega Shield. Yes. It's Mega. I guess I'll punch everything because I can't shoot. I guess I won't because that's terrible. Oh fuck, I'm about to die. So the only shooting gun they give you is one that... They put you in a swamp where there's tons of water that you can't even see through, and the only weapon they give you, aside from your fists, is one that can't even be fired in the water. <sighs> that does not seem like the most brilliant idea. Oh fuck, I'm about to die. Eat. Eat, eat, eat. I think it got stuck. Yep, it's stuck. Maybe I need to shoot the other end of this thing. Or maybe I don't need to shoot it at all. God, the movement is terrible. And 
what is this white line? Oh, it's the border of this transparent texture. Partially transparent texture. Texture with an alpha channel. That's interesting. Gigantic flies. human being. Oh shit. Wait, where's the thing that I blow up? Oh sh Jesus, I didn't... <laughs> I did not mean to shoot him, I meant to shoot over his head. Oh well, he got in the way. He should have known better. Also, I wonder, why didn't the turret respond to the person rather than me? It's not as if they know I even exist. So it's not like it's just tuned to my signature, to my face. I hear a fly, I don't see one. Are you stuck inside, buddy? Are you stuck inside? You're stuck inside, aren't you? You're stuck inside. What the hell is this? I don't know what... Oh, okay. Alright. Open the thingy. I'll take it. Sounded like a stock sound effect. In fact, I'm certain it was a stock sound effect. What's shooting me? Oh. Get out of here. What the? Is this what I think it is? Oh, okay. I thought it was like I needed to shoot him to get past him. No. Okay. Can we try that again? Yeah! 92 at 133 monsters and 1 out of 8 secrets. Level complete. From the swamp into the sewer. A 
I don't have the firepower to blast through that gate. I wonder if I can... <laughs> Who was... Thank you, ghost friend. <laughs> Whoa. What was that all about? And look at that. More flies. Ten out of ten writing would read it if you made that into a book. I can't think. I, I literally don't think I can even think of a more ridiculous way to have something happen without even having to make a even remotely plausible way, a remotely plausible reason for it to happen. It's like, hmm, locked door. How do we open it? Floating ghost that doesn't talk and then disappears. Okay. Okay. And let me guess, the next enemies are going to be more frogs and more gigantic flies. Okay, well, I think I've seen enough. <laughs> I was wondering what had... Uh... I came into this wondering... What had John Romero and the rest of the team made? When they went off to make something epic and it cost way more money than they thought it would, and they spent way more time on it, and it was a complete commercial failure, and nobody really liked it that much, I thought, what did they actually make? And now I know. And now I can see why it was a commercial failure. And why people didn't really like it. Because it's... <laughs> it's not very good. <laughs> it's really not very good at all. It's not... terrible. I don't think it's terrible, it's just... Not very good, and the beginning is incredibly obnoxious. With the only gun that you're given being one that can't even fire inside of water. And there's a lot of water around that's also so freaking... It's so freaking thick you can't even properly see through it to see the enemies that are below it. And even if you're in it, you can't shoot when you're in the water. And then you're just constantly being assaulted by obnoxious little frogs and... Gigantic, but still relatively small flies which are really hard to see and shoot at. It's just, this is a horrible beginning. It's obnoxious. And the movement is terrible. It's really bad to me. I mean, some of it's just... I mean, some of it's just because it's an old school shooter, you know, old tool shooters had really, really fast movement, I remember that, and it's been a long time since I've played one, so I'm not used to super fast movements. And when you have super fast movements, there's a certain amount of 
kind of slippy, slidey feel that you'll have. But it still doesn't feel good at all. I, I'm pretty sure it could be better in other games, probably were better. Especially how when you move with two direction keys at the same time, like forwards and left. Especially the fact that that makes you go super fast, it's just weird. I don't know, was that a, a classic shooter thing? It's been a long time since I've played. Like, I was never really into Doom, or... Um, I was into Quake, a bit. Quake, uh, Quake Team Arena. And then I was really into Unreal Tournament. But it's been a long time. Is that a classic shooter thing, that when you move, like, diagonally, when you move with two movement keys, you move faster? I don't know if that was a thing or not, but either way, I don't like it. I really don't. It's slippy, it's slidey, I don't feel like I have good control over where the hell I'm going. And it leads to sudden weird bursts of speed. Where you go to normal speed, and then you press another movement key, like this, and you go, woo, super fast. I'm just gonna stand here and have constipation. Yeah, this game is a mess. I mean, I'm not a great judge of how good this game is. Because again, I've I was never too much into old school FPSs. And it's been a long time since I've played them. So I'm not particularly experienced with this genre. But even I can tell that this is not a very good game. It's pretty depressing to think about it, isn't it? Tens of millions of dollars. Years, literally years of delays. John Romero just... I assume pouring his all into this, wanting to create something... You know, something epic. Something to come onto the market that's just gonna blow people away. I mean, he wanted them to be... He wanted them to be blown away. Like, oh my god, this is fucking awesome. That's what he wanted. He wanted something that would make people say, this is fucking awesome. And they'd have the time of their life, and instead... This is what came out. It's pretty depressing. Gotta, gotta admit that, it's pretty depressing. But, it's good for a laugh. It's funny to see how weird it is. I don't know why I'm still punching the wall and the floor. I'm not sure why, but I'm enjoying it. You know that uh, that colored lighting there, the blue. I just see it pop up sometimes, right there. I'm pretty sure that was only possible because of the Quake 2 engine. That's one of the reasons it was delayed so much. Not the, by no means the only reason, but one of the reasons it was delayed so much is because John Romero... Uh, well, he was originally making it on the Quake 1 engine. And... He saw Quake 2. And the Quake 2 engine that it was running on. And he was absolutely blown away by it. And remember, in his mind he wanted to create... He wanted to create the ultimate FPS. Something that was just at the top of its game and looked amazing. And so when he saw the Quake 2 engine, and he thought, oh, we're on the Quake 1 engine. Like, that's... It. The Quake 2 just looks... The Quake 2 engine just looks so much better. It can do so much more. And so he decided to port... Uh, basically remake the entire game in the Quake 2 engine, which was a huge reason for the delay. That took a ton of time to just entirely remake it in a different engine, because apparently he originally thought the Quake 2 engine would be very similar to the first one, the first engine, so porting it would not be too hard and wouldn't take much time, but apparently John Carmack had made a lot of changes to the Quake 2 engine, and so it was more different than he thought, and it took a hell of a lot longer. And I believe one of the things that John Romero wanted from the Quake 2 engine that was apparently not possible in the first Quake engine was colored lighting, which is why this blue here is, I guess that's probably a feature of the Quake 2 engine. Yep.
Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not really sure how to end this. I hope it was interesting to see this interesting mess of a game. It's very strange, isn't it? Very strange. Alright, thank you for watching.